Hello everyone. Well, we are carrying on with Stockfish's opening repertoire. 1d4, knight f6, c4, and then e6. And then the next video will be more on g6. e6. Well, as we saw in the overview all those videos ago, um, Stockfish's main line is to go knight f3 and then expecting a transposition back into the ragazin, which, um, uh, yeah, in which it doesn't really find much of an advantage there. However, there's plenty of other stuff we can force Stockfish to do, and um, that gives some, uh, some very interesting results. So after e6, um, let's have a look at um, knight c3 first of all, which is the move that I've played uh, all my professional career. Um, bishop b4 is Stockfish's line, and then just like the other engines, Komodo Dragon and uh, uh, Coivisto as well, e3 is the move that, um, that Stockfish considers to give the best chance of a very slight advantage. Um, let's just have a look at uh, the main lines. They're not too thrilling, but they are a tiny advantage. So Castles is uh, Stockfish's main line, Knight f3. And now um, the line that it likes best is something that was actually played uh, um, in a, an elite game a, a little while back. And that's b6, followed by just cramming the center full of pawns. Um, and you meet d takes c5 with d takes c4. And play this sort of Queen's Gambit accepted uh, position, really. Uh, the only slight inconvenience for White is that this knight is on c3. It would rather be on d2, and that makes somewhat of a difference. Um, this is actually a game um, uh, uh, Ivanchuk against uh, Cheparinov, Sibonik 2016. Uh, that ended um, in a draw. And, um, well, Stockfish gives itself 0 0.00, .00 in this position. So uh, that's not great news, really. Um, knight b5, rook d8, knight c7. A little bit uh, unusual there. But, you know, all this piece play just doesn't really achieve anything in the long run. Although black has to be uh, accurate, of course. Um, looking at uh, a few more normal lines, um, this b6 followed by uh, c5 and d5, quite unusual. Uh, this is much more normal, c5 and d5. And then uh, Stockfish wants to take on d5 very quickly. And uh, there's a couple of ideas. Um, e takes d5 is pretty normal. And now d takes c5, bishop g4, castles bishop c5. Yeah, and, uh, and here Stockfish wants to, to uh, lash out straight away with uh, g4. Um, and then expects f takes g6, just opening the f file. Uh, yeah, bad pawns for black, but slightly weakened uh, white kingside. And, uh, well, this is the, the main line that uh, Stockfish goes for. Um, yeah, maybe a slight edge for white, but, uh, again, nothing too scary here. You know, I mean, uh, black should uh, make a draw quite, uh, quite comfortably here. That's one possibility. The other idea that black has got is to uh, take on d4, e takes d4, e d5, castles, and then h6. Uh, this has also been played in some top level games uh, for example this was uh, a position was reached in uh, Nidic Salem Sharjah 2022 and uh, here black played uh, bishop g4 Stockfish's move is h6 knight e5 knight c6 bishop c2 and now bishop e6 is a novelty and you know again white's got a slight advantage um, slightly better pawn structure a few weak dark squares but as long as black plays actively like this then, you know, this should be, um, you know, completely fine for black. This is a nice idea, threatening rook f6 and queen h7 checkmate. But after rook e8, then, um, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be dead equal, this position. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you're not saying that it's um, it's wonderful chances, this for white, as you can see. But, um, uh, yeah, Stockfish just considered this a little bit more... Um, um, uh, yeah, replete with chances than uh, than the other lines. Surprises me a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I can see why. Again, you know, it's it's part of uh, adjusting your expectations. If you'd shown me this in the pre-computer age, I would have said, ah, I'm not interested in this at all with white. I must have something better. Nowadays, you know, any edge is good. So uh, you'll settle for trying to find an edge in this sort of line. There's one interesting thing as well, that uh, instead of castles, black can go c5. And uh, funnily enough, one of the variations that all through my professional career I wrestled with um, but never had to face, you know, much to my relief, was this line bishop a5. Um, I did have uh, um, bishop take c3 against Anatoly Karpov once, had an advantage, but not uh, enough really. But I always thought that bishop a5 was a, a pretty decent move, just keeping the tension. And the idea is to meet d take c5 with d take c4. 
and um, um, well, you're flattening out the pawn structure. These are a little bit uh, constricted, getting in each other's way, and you're just going to try and go knight d7, take c5. Um, Stockfish's main line here is um, uh, bishop d2, b6, knight g3, castles, takes, takes, queen c2, bishop b7, castles, knight d7, which it gives um, a slight advantage to white, 0.33. It's not very much at all, but you've got a slightly better pawn structure. And, uh, well, black's got to play very actively, I think, and then he holds it without any problems. If black plays a little bit more passively, I've had a, a similar position with a, a bishop on a5 and a pawn on c5, and uh, I won a very nice game indeed. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, this should not really be that much for uh, for white at all. But I suppose you can sort of see glimmers of where you might have an advantage against uh, a not, you know, machine-accurate uh, opponent there. I mean, that's 4e3. I mean, what does Stockfish think about the other lines? Um, well, queen c2, I mean, this, um, you know, the main line. But from the very start, Stockfish only considers one line. And uh, that's the line that's just, um, well, more or less the, uh, the only line that's played at the top level. It's this castles d5, and then you play the bishop to a6, and then hit with c5. And uh, the basic idea is you give up the two bishops, you weaken your pawn structure, but you've got a big lead in, a, in a development and you're attacking the white queen side. And uh, well, you know, this just seems to be completely good. Rook d1 was a game Geary against So Stavanger 2022 that just ended in a draw. This is uh, Stockfish's idea, uh, knight d2, but uh, it also shows the, um, the correct solution. I mean, some pretty uh, way out moves there g4 freeing g2 for the bishop takes takes knight takes d4 rook b2 bishop g2 bishop b7 but it just all hangs together and uh, obviously here you know again you'd expect certainly an engine to make a draw and i think uh, i'd expect to make a draw against pretty much anyone from this position too so this is really you know the complete killer for this line queen c2 this castles followed by d5 and b6 and d takes c4 you know and uh yeah, hard to see uh, how um, you know White's going to find much in this. All of the engines concur. This is just just dead equal for uh, for Black. Um, another interesting line in the Nimzo is uh, F3, and uh, but again, like Komodo Dragon, you know Stockfish just wants to play C5 and head it back into some sort of sameish structure. Plays it slightly different to uh, Komodo Dragon. Um, this is a game Vashi Le Grave against uh, Wesley So. Uh, now bishop d2 and actually we follow the game of Ronian Carlson Douglas 2019 for quite a while here takes takes knight d7 knight e2 and um, well here uh, Levon played f5 straight away uh, Stockfish wants to um, to play f5 a move later and give up the um, uh, the two bishops but gets lots of pressure against this uh, uh, bishop on e4 and actually considers that this is the the best play with a draw by repetition so again, f3, c5 is um, uh, the best attempt for, uh, for black there, according to the engine. And um, finally, we have um, a3, the same-ish. Actually, um, yeah, like Coivisto, actually, Stockfish is not at all impressed. And after b6, doesn't want to go for the slow build-up with, uh, with f3 and e4 that you have uh, um, normally. It just wants to play the move uh, e4. And um, you just clarify the situation immediately, basically, takes and go for this ending. And, uh, well, I mean, this is ending up as slightly better for black, really, but not too terrible. But uh, not exactly a recommendation from the engines for playing this. Um, I mean, I love the same-ish, and uh, it is very effective at faster time controls against uh, maybe slightly less prepared humans. But uh, against engines, uh, all the training games I've ever played, they've been total disasters. Um, I explained this in um, in the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and uh, yeah, you know, I just never managed to create any sort of counterplay and I always wonder where on earth are all those chances that I thought I had when I was analysing, you know, it's uh, so um, yeah, I mean basically, you know, the engines aren't keen on the Nimzo Indian and uh, yeah, you know, they just don't want to play it basically. What do they want to play? They want to play the move knight f3, um, or even they'll accept uh, g3 as well. Let's have a look at, uh, at knight f3 here. So after knight f3, black's got a number of possibilities. d5 transposes back into the ragazin. Um, obviously, um, a couple more moves. Um, let's have a look at the most sensible ones first, and then I'll save the, uh, the really uh, interesting one later. After b6, g3 that's the only move that any engines want to consider in the queen's indian uh, none of the other moves get any attention at all 
and uh, well this is um, uh, Stockfish's line and funnily enough this is a line that we saw in an Alpha Zero Stockfish 8 game and uh, it looked just as unlikely to uh, <laughs> to cause a win there as it does here. Um, funnily enough actually I mean the Alpha Zero game got quite sharp I mean White played uh, Bishop E4 um, Stockfish avoided the exchange of Queens and uh, you know White got some sort of uh, play it felt like I'll just show, you know show you the game and uh, show you what happened um, I mean we've got this past um, uh, um, potential past queenside pawn we weaken up the queen side and uh, then we uh, sacrifice the exchange on d6 and try and make play you know it looked quite dangerous but of course against uh, stockfish uh, even stockfish eight then um, you know black just defends uh, perfectly and it's fine but that did feel like quite a bit of initiative uh, stockfish's uh, line here takes takes bishop e4 rook d7 Mwah. You don't really feel that anything much is going to happen there. Um, again, as a human player, I'd expect to, to hold this, and uh, obviously an engine will hold it with black against anyone else. Um, um, yeah, I mean, white does have some possibilities, you know, of expanding on the uh, a little bit on the queen side, maybe a lot on the king side as well. But um, uh, in general, this should just be a draw. You know, it's a 0 0.30 advantage according to uh, to Stockfish. Um, Bishop b4 check is the Bogo Indian and this is quite uh, quite interesting um, Knight d2 b6 that was uh, Stockfish's best move uh, unfortunately it analyzed to unbelievable depth and then only displayed this line it felt a little bit like that uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy the answer is 42 you know b6 0.54 finished um, I can show you a line that um, uh, that was comes from a bit a little bit earlier in its uh, analysis e3 Bishop b7 Bishop d3 and just play it like this really and uh well knight bd7 knight e4 and then eventually we're going to play c5 a little bit of an advantage for white always with the two bishops in these types of positions but in principle black's going to swap off the c for probably the d pawn and then yeah you know we'll find some way to equalize that it's not particularly thrilling the one interesting thing was that stockfish you know for quite a while uh, was very interested in this move bishop e7 which was also uh, an idea of uh, coivisto's and um, what is the idea of that? Well, often you play um, castles um, a3, bishop e7. And then you play this move e4, d5, um, e5, knight fd7. But, I mean, you know, because you've actually castled here, there are moves like h4, followed by bishop d3 and knight g5, and it gets quite dangerous. So what um, Coivisto is trying to do is trying to provoke this e4 and then go knight d7 and actually play all the center attacking moves before you've actually castled and it's only later when white goes something like rook e1 that you then go castles here you know and uh, well h4 is going to be less dangerous white's uh, wasted quite a bit of time in a way i mean it's still um, an advantage for um, for white here but um, not a huge one according to uh, stockfish we end up here in a position that's uh, 0.55 for white. I mean, black's got to do a little bit of work to get developed. Actually, what um, uh, Stockfish just does is give away a pawn and go bishop e6 and then just claim that there's enough compensation, which there undoubtedly is. But um, quite an interesting line of the Bogo there, just bishop b4 and then bishop e7, and uh, just claiming that moving the knight to dragging the knight to d2 away from c3 is worth, uh, you know, a, a, a tempo of development really quite interesting there but then now we're going to get on to the most interesting thing because um you know this move order with um uh with 1d4 um knight f6 c4 e6 is often used by modern benoni players so after knight f3 you actually play the move c5 and uh, the point is you're not going to face the most dangerous flick knife system uh against the modern benoni which is knight c3 d5 and then e4 and f4 and a bishop b5 check um but um uh, simply you play c5 here and after d5 you head back into the modern benoni and you're playing against less dangerous lines but amazingly stockfish i mean i let it go for um uh in the end 500,000 million nodes because i couldn't quite believe it um but it kept on saying it wants to play b5 which is the blumenfeld gambit amazing absolutely amazing so d takes e6 fe6 cb5 and then a6 um interestingly enough um 
uh, Ma- uh, Mamadyarov played uh, the Blumenfeld against Ding in a, a recent uh, tournament, 2021. Uh, there, Mamadyarov played d5. Here, Stockfish wants a6. And after e3, then d5. And, um, well, I'll just show you the main line here. Bishop b2, bishop d6, castles, bishop b7, knight c3, castles. And we're just, I mean, we're just going to go king h8 and e5 and e4 and, uh, you know, really very, very dangerous. A3 is what um, uh, Stockfish wanted and actually just to give back a pawn like this um, and, uh, yeah, claim some sort of advantage. It's a little bit surprising in a way because uh, Stockfish claims a 1.08 advantage in this position, whereas I'm sort of looking at it and thinking, really? I mean, all I've got is a few slightly weak pawns. Uh, it doesn't feel like um, um, a one pawn advantage here. Um, but um, so yeah I don't know I think that, that evaluation may be a little bit over optimistic but quite amazing that um, uh, that uh, Stockfish is looking for the Blumenfeld here rather than playing the modern Benoni um, quite amazing and uh, what does Stockfish want against the modern Benoni actually just the old standard classical variation here Bishop b2 and then its best line is uh, a4 a6 and then f3 this is what it's expecting and it gives itself a, a 1.17 advantage. So, you know, higher than uh, the position it reached with the Blumenfeld. So very interesting, actually, um, it has to be said. Um, yeah, wouldn't have expected that at all. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I really let uh, Stockfish analyze for a very long time. And uh, yeah, it just considers the Blumenfeld to be more promising than the modern Benoni. So uh, even the modern Benoni in its best incarnation. So the other line that's uh, worth looking at is uh, g3 straight away. And then it's quite interesting. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't really detect a reason why Stockfish wants to do this specific move order. Um, but g3 wants to play bishop b4 check, bishop d2, and then bishop b7. And after bishop g2, play d5. And, uh, well, this is heading back. This is heading into the, uh, the Catalan, a line I've played a lot myself. It's just super solid. Um, knight e5, bishop b7. Um, rook d1, knight h5, we move around a little bit and then somewhere we grab the bishop pair and well we've seen this uh, uh, in lines played by um, uh, other engines as well. Yeah, you know, white slightly better, two bishops but um, yeah, make something of this against, uh, well, Magnus or uh, an engine uh, you're just not going to. You know, this knight is going to come round uh, e4 to d6 um, and then knight to d6 and we're going to play the bishop to a6 and black pieces are all very active. Um, in principle, you know, white should be trying to either play in the center, f3, e4, or expand on the king's side, maybe f3, g4. You know, it's uh, not very much of an advantage. 0 0.01, according to, uh, to Stockfish. So it's uh, pretty impressed with that uh, very solid line. The only interesting thing that happened was that when I put d5, bishop g2, bishop b4 check on the... Uh, uh, on the engine is that uh, around uh, 230,000 million nodes, Stockfish suddenly switched back to knight d2, but I left it, you know, for even longer, and uh, then it switched back to bishop d2 in this line. But interesting to see, knight d2, castles a3, just a pawn sacrifice like this. I think it's been played by Dubov quite a bit. Um, and then you just sacrifice the pawn and, uh, yeah, just claim that uh, you'll get it back and have the two bishops, but... Yeah, OK. You know, again, this is looking, uh, unfortunately, quite um, quite even here. Rook d1 takes, c takes d4, and uh, black's a little bit uncomfortable with that queen on c7 and a few loose minor pieces. But uh, obviously, with engine precision, that's not going to be anything uh, significant. And uh, Stockfish gives, just gives it a 0 0.20 uh, um, evaluation. But, um, but OK, again, you know, kind of uh, interesting there. So yeah, I mean the big bombshell there was uh, choosing the Blumenfeld instead of um, uh, instead of the modern Benoni. I found that very very interesting there. Um, that's all about we have on uh, two e six. In the next um, uh, uh, video, we're going to have a look at two g six, and there's some pretty good stuff in there too. See you there.